Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! What is going on? I am Rick Alvarez. Welcome again to Cut the Tape. So, I thought today I would take some time and open a few things that might be on the more premium or elusive side of things, starting with this. This is the Transformers, I want to say 2012, Dark of the Moon, uh, Year of the Dragon figure. Uh, this is a figure I, I, I helped work on, and uh, I just never got around to opening it. I, I have one up on my shelf. This one's, you know, the box has seen better days, so I thought, hey, Stojevrog, uh, let me open it. So, we'll start with this. Maybe we can do a little bit of this. This is the Transformers uh, Go Kenzan Kurumosha. This is the black version. This was a Toys R Us Japan exclusive. And then uh, finally I thought we'd end with a little bit of a uh, reflector. Oh, refractor. It's reflector. So, let's, uh, let's cut the tape on this guy. This is a cool piece because it celebrated the Year of the Dragon. Uh, there are 12 signs in the Zodiac, and the dragon is one of them. So, we originally were planning on celebrating all 12, and I think it ended up being just 6 or 7 ever getting made. So there was the Year of the Dragon, the Year of the Ghost, the Year of the Monkey, the Year of the Rooster, I believe, was made, and did I say Year of the Ghost? Five or six. Well, that was it, and then it kind of fell through the wayside. So we have battery instructions, and we have regular instructions. But instructions are for amateurs. So I want to give you a little bit of history about this toy. Originally, this toy was very, very different than what you see here. So this toy, when this thing was designed, we didn't know what the jet pack was going to look like. We just knew that the trailer was going to be in the movie and it was going to turn into a jet pack. And that was it. But the original design for this, which was actually, uh, that we, we made a, a mock-up. Uh, out of various bits and pieces. The trailer opened up. And there was a cannon in the middle of the trailer. And Optimus would sit in the cannon. And it was battery operated. And you press the button. And it would spin 360 degrees. And you know, lit up in sound. And uh, that version never got made. Unfortunately. We ended up with this. And uh, it's just a matter of time before Studio Series comes along and does it a little bit better. Which I think Studio Series number 40 or number 44 is, uh, is the Dark of the Moon trailer. So this has... You know, it's one thing to put uh, ties on something. But then when you put the ties on the bottom as well, and then you tape over them, it's just a giant pain in the butt. All right. Here we go. Oh, it makes a mess I'm trying to get this stuff out of here. This box is pretty shot, so I'm not too worried about keeping it for posterity's sake. You know, plus I got one that's sealed already. 
All right, there we go. Oh. All right, so here's something interesting I want to talk about. So you see these little holes here? Oh. Battery and lights still work. They're activated down here by this. So these were designed so that you can actually tie it down into the package. See what I mean? Like the packaging, like that works for robot mode or for, for vehicle mode. That's a fun little thing. Uh, so uh, Dark of the Moon. Why the title Dark of the Moon? Well, originally, it was going to be Dark Side of the Moon. To me, nothing with the moon made sense because they're only on the moon for like five seconds. It should have been Satellite of Doom or Transport to Oblivion, some, something like that. So we pushed back. So I was, I was there at the time. And we ended up getting Dark of the Moon, which I think is an actual phrase. I know they do use it in the film. All right, so here we go. Year of the Dragon, Dark of the Moon, Leader Class Optimus Prime. Let us dare transform this. Since it comes in the packaging, in vehicle mode, this shall be displayed in robot mode. Man, I can't believe it's already been... Oh, man. This... This thing's been waiting eight years for me to open. Time just gets away from you. So as I was saying, the original was very different. It was still coming with an Optimus about uh, this size. Um, but at that time, the, the version of this that came with the uh, cannon did not uh, combine with the trailer to become the large jetpack robot. So that's something that could use some glue. I don't know why certain parts uh, are not glued. They're just, hey, the pressure fit, that'll, that'll work. Uh, sometimes it does, sometimes it, it doesn't. I find that in most cases, unfortunately, it does not. You know what? I think I transformed this thing once when I first got it out of the box. And like the other, like the actual street version, I transformed it once and uh, that was it. Uh, it is uh, definitely something that leaves a lot to be desired. However, you do have to factor in the fact that this is a toy that is supposed to combine. So, at least it locks in pretty well. I just, man, I just, like, I just can't get over that. It's a little better, but I mean, it's not great. I 
Yeah, we'll just leave these off right now. All right, so there we have the main robot. And it's pretty close to the actual release. I think the actual release was a little darker. Here is another look at the Year of the Dragon trailer. It's on both sides. Now, if I remember, I kind of crack this open like an egg. Boy, that thing will not shut up, huh? What did I say about instructions? The thing about instructions are sometimes they can be helpful. Sometimes they are not. In this case, they are. So, one of the biggest complaints we got from Revenge of the Fallen was uh, kids were having a lot of problems transforming the figures, especially the leader class Optimus Prime. It's a great toy. It's, I mean, it's the definitive toy of that line. However, uh, kids would go to their parents ask for help transforming them and the parents would be like uh i don't know what i'm doing and so the parents would complain to us that we make it way too hard and uh well you know we listened and that's where the whole uh let's make transformers more intuitive thing came from so that was uh that was feedback that was given to us that we listened to and uh we we did in fact uh make the Transformers more intuitive. Wow. It has been a long time since I have transformed this. I know these come out, right? Alright, well, maybe not. Gotta love those ratchet joints. All right, so we've got our uh, prime head and super magna gun on this side. does not help to look uh, it doesn't hurt to look at the box sometimes right I mean <laughs> what is the worst that could happen all right so we got that we got these uh, you know you can tell when a mold has been run so much that you see deterioration in it. This is one of those molds that probably got ran so many times because we did this as a, uh, we did this as a Comic-Con exclusive where it came packaged in the truck mode. We did this, uh, the regular release. And then we, Did this. There we go. Uh, for all the international releases. So, here we go with this. Hey, it's pretty big. Uh, at the time, a few people in marketing were, were like saying, 
we should claim that it is the largest transformer Optimus Prime ever made. I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't do that. Don't do that. So I had to create a document showing that, well, there's a lot of other Optimus Primes that have been made, and to call this one the biggest may do us a disservice. When you factor in uh, R.I.D. Optimus, the original R.I.D., or Car Robots, or uh, as it's also called, uh, Transformers uh, 2000. You had to put the wings. Oh, there we go. So that fits there. The feet point down. They close there. That closes there. A little minutia things. Close enough. And then this. This goes on top. Yeah, close enough. <sighs> you can tell I'm getting old because uh, I'm starting to lose my way in transforming transformers. It's starting to get me worried. I know I'm 40 years old now. I remember when I was in high school and I was buying G1 figures and I got a wheel jack for 50 bucks and I was like oh man that is awesome expensive but that's awesome I've always wanted wheel jack I've always wanted scourge I've always wanted motor master there is a little store called Play With This in South Jersey, in Pensacola, New Jersey. And uh, it's still there. It's not in Pensacola anymore. It's always a pain in the butt to get the, uh, the arms in here. Oh, is that, that's because I had the fist out. Yeah. I gotta put the fist away so that I can slip these in here. That slides behind there. So coming up is TFCon in Washington, D.C. I will not be there, but I will be there because I'll be doing a panel live via Skype where I'm going to show off some um, some behind-the-scenes stuff. Some stuff that, uh, you know, uh, either didn't get made or for one reason or another changed drastically between... Uh, the time uh, it was supposed to be produced. Oh, I see. Oh! Oh! oh wait, wait a minute. I put that there, though. You know what? I'm bored. I'm bored with this. I'm vexed. This is terribly vexing. I'm, I'm bored with this now. Like, I don't know if I'm vexed or if I'm more pissed off. There we go. Nope, then. Because the cannon goes in front. That's why. Because it goes like this. Uh. Uh. Double uh. Uh. Uh.
this is like going back in time for me. It has been such a long time since I've messed with a movie figure from the movie line that wasn't a studio series figure. I still got to mess around with the arms, but hey, there it is. Boom, it's big. Yay, it's red. There's the back. Oh, wow. All right. Jesus. I've literally got years and years of toys that I need to open. Doing stuff like this doesn't make me want to do it. I don't even want to open this right now, but let's do it. So this is from the Transformers Go series. This is... Uh, Kind of like a sideways journey between like season one and season two, uh, season three of Transformers Prime. So this is what Takara did in the meantime. So it's technically part of Transformers Prime, but only in Takara's universe. So Transformers Go. The whole idea was combination. Everything can combine. Pretty much everything can combine. And not only could it combine, but it can combine, much like a Scramble City guy, it can combine in different ways. So if you had three guys, uh, one was, a sh uh, I think, a sub, uh, a plane, and then a fire truck, and those three guys can combine, and then they can combine a different way, and then a different way to form three different robots. So think Land Cross. And then they would combine um, these guys with the convoy of that series, which was a bullet train. Not the best figure, but it was all about combination. You got a really a lot of really cool repaints in that. You had a uh, Nemesis Beast Hunters uh, Optimus Prime in that series. Uh, you had a uh, Go Prime, which was a black and green version of... Um, uh, the lion, the pirate, Thundertron. I should know that guy's name since I helped create him. Aaron came up with that name, Aaron Archer. That was our FU to Voltron and Thundercats. So we've cut the tape. This is the Toys R Us exclusive. This is circa 2010. No, 2011. 11, I think. Is there a year on this? Takara has does not do a good job of putting years on the on their figures lately. So here we go. Baggy with card and instructions. Uh, there's a lot of chase pieces for this. So uh, there's like a chrome piece. I think there's a gold chrome and I think there's a silver chrome piece for this, which is like the head of the combiner. Um, I think the silver one's the harder one to get. I have the gold one. So, little lackluster box. Not anything very exciting. So there's no twist ties in this. This is just held down uh, between the clamshell. And, oddly enough, there is no tape on the clamshell. So, it just opens up like that, which is a little weird. And it just comes out like that which is a little weird. Uh, if you remember, uh, some Bacon figures, or not Bacon, club figures that had like large swords, like, um, uh, uh, the Combiners, God, not Banzai Tron, but, The other one, the tank. Anyway, big swords. If you see the, uh, I think it was the Comic Con set with like the three girls. It was like um, Windblade, Chromia, RC. Like they had big swords. All those weapons, uh, all these weapons, like um, the Alpha Lion from Bacon came with the, with these swords. All those weapons came from Transformers Go. So here he is. And this is the part that goes above the combiner. So this guy combines 
with uh, another figure and then the convoy to form a larger figure. Um, these did not get very well received. Uh, this is my first time handling this particular character. Seems pretty intuitive. Seems pretty basic. Although I wouldn't try to combine them without looking at the uh, instructions or even a, a helpful video online. And uh, they're a different, uh, they're a unique size. They're, uh, they're quite big. You know, I think these could have been cool if uh, we got some, I hate to go back to that well, but if we got some G1 re reissues out of these guys, like uh, obviously if this was a Prowl or Smokescreen, um, I think that could have that helped this, this line. It was not very popular with collectors. There was animation for this series. Uh, I believe they were five-minute episodes, and they came on uh, DVDs, or maybe they were just streamed. Anyway, I just remember them not being very good. They were akin to uh, Transformer Cybertron animation. That is what the animation reminded me of. I mean, that is a pretty big car. You know, if you, if you compare this to, like, Voyager and Deluxes, say from Chug. This is this is a pretty freaking huge car. This has like undertones of like UK exclusive figures. That's what this reminds me of. Very interesting. What is cool about this piece? The Autobot symbols here have like a, like a crown, like wings on the side of it. Uh, very cool. That symbol sh hopefully should show up somewhere else. It's a very cool symbol. All right, let's uh, move on to our last piece. This is Refractor. This is, uh, I believe, the Hasbro Plus exclusive version. It's the G1 Deco, Toy Deco. Uh, comes with a couple extra pieces, comes in a box that uh, is reminiscent of a camera. This is uh, the Refractor Reconnaissance Team, Viewfinder, Spyglass, and Spectro. Very, very cool box. Transformer Siege War for Cybertron. I gotta hand it to them. This, this is nice. I do like this a lot. All right, so tape is cut. I flipped my knife backwards because I don't want to crease it. So I'm going to try and open this. Hmm. I don't want to rip the top of the box. There we go. That. Instructions right on top. Cool little detail on the inside of the box. There's, this is something you can tell there's some love put into it. All right, so I see how this is packaged. All right, so uh, there's a cardboard insert, printed cardboard insert. There's a, it's a clamshell. There's a bottom shell, the top shell. The top shell is not taped down. So much like that Takara toy we just opened, it just pops right out. So we've got our three blasters. We've got our Kremzeke. And uh, I believe this is the new Kremzeek, not the one that came with the Masterpiece Megatron. And the part of, I'm just gonna call him Reflector. 
that is uh, uh, the viewfinder is connected. So we're just gonna snap, cut, and there we go. Beautiful. Woo! I like this toy. So it comes with a few new parts. It comes uh, uh, with this part here to form the shoulders of, uh, what is it, Viewmaster? Not Viewmaster, Viewfinder. And it comes with the flash over here. So, these come off, these come off. Oh, man. Oh, and it's got the, uh, the battery cover. This is also new. Oh, boy, do I love this. This is straight up G1. Did you ever think we would get this toy, let alone in this style, as part of a Generations toy line? Oh, my God. I, I, I give them my full compliments. This was done very well. Full compliments to the chef. I'm very happy with this. Uh, and they all, they all have the toy, the G1 toy. Oh, do they all have new heads? No. They do not all have new heads. They all have the same head that came with the toy. But that is, that is quite all right. I mean, they did a good job matching these colors up. I highly recommend this. I believe this is still available on uh, Hasbro Pulse. Even though I have another one of these, I'm gonna keep this box because it is nice. It is very, very nice. All right, I got some toys I gotta play with. This was kind of a messy episode of Cut the Tape. Kind of all over the place here. So, all right. Thank you for tuning in. That's the wrong instruction. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, next time on Cut the Tape, I'm gonna do uh, MP44, which is the Masterpiece Optimus, the new one, and I'm gonna compare that to a third party figure. I have a Jabber sitting here in the box. We're gonna compare and contrast those packagings. All right, guys, remember, there's always time to cut the tape. No, I don't like that. It's never too late to cut the tape, or you should always cut the tape. Either way, get two of each. One to keep in the package and one to cut the tape. All right. Thank you.